Hi, my name is Ajay Chari. I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine and Director of Clinical Research at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. And we presented at this year's ASH meeting an update of the daratumumab subcutaneous formulation, the so-called PAVO study. Um, the reason daratumumab subcutaneous formulation is important is we know Dara is a great drug. It gets every few months, it seems like it's getting a new indication in myeloma. And it speaks to the efficacy of the drug and also the safety and the combinability of almost every other myeloma drug. And so it's currently approved in newly diagnosed patients with uh, bortezomib, melphalan, and uh, prednisone. It's um, also approved in the relapse setting with lenalidomide and bortezomib, uh, and also in the relapse refractory setting with pomalidomide. But the main issue with Dara, really, if any, is the hassle of giving it, which is the first dose of infusion has about a 50% rate of infusion-related reactions, and the median time of infusion is six to eight hours. And that can be inconvenient, particularly in community sites and practices where the infusion center is open eight hours or maybe less, and by the time the patient comes in, gets labs and checked, we're already, the tuck clock is ticking. So wouldn't it be nice to have a more convenient way of giving this drug? And fortunately, there is, and this um, construct has already been used with Herceptin and Rituximab, and it's basically called hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase is an enzyme that breaks down some of the, um, the tissue around the skin. And it doesn't cause damage or any problem, but it allows a, a subcutaneous administration under the skin to be widely absorbed through the body. And so you can't just take regular IV DARA and squirt it under the stomach. That volume is being mixed in 500 ml. So when you're concentrating it, you have to add this other compound, and that's called a co-formulate. So what we now do is take a median infusion time from six to eight hours to now three to five minutes. The, and what we've seen in the results at the, the rate of uh, infusion-related reactions drops from 50% to about 16%. And the efficacy seems to be as good, if not better, although it's important to not do cross-tile comparisons because the initial DARA study was, treated, was done in heavily treated patients. But to give you an idea of the efficacy that we're seeing so far, the median progression-free survival of all patients was over 12 months, and the median uh, progression-free survival of patients who were double refractory to both a protosome inhibitor and an imid was uh, around 11.7 months. So that's very encouraging because uh, historically we saw lower numbers in the order of three to three and a half months or so. But again, I would use caution. We, 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 we need a direct comparison before we can say definitively that these are better numbers. And in fact, there is a randomized phase three study that has already accrued fully uh, comparing IV to subcutaneous bortezomib, uh, sorry, scratch that, uh, IV to subcutaneous daratumumab. Um, and so I think the other interesting thing that we see is what we call pharmacokinetic, which is we assess how the body is processing the drug. And what we know is that most important predictor of daratumumab's efficacy is the level of the daratumumab on cycle three, day one, so-called the trough level. And this is when a patient's gone through the eight weekly dosing and we measure the level. And preliminary data suggests, and this has also been presented in a poster here at ASH, that the ph pharmacokinetics or the level of daratumumab uh, when given in the skin seems to be equal, if not better, than the IV daratumumab. And I think the ramification of that is this may be part of the reason we're getting better efficacy. And also, as daratumumab goes out to that monthly schedule, where we did that because of convenience issues, might the subcutaneous maintain higher levels of the trough um, daratumumab. So it's rare in medicine that we get a drug that is more better tolerated, convenient, and comparable in efficacy. So this is really a great thing for patients. And I think patients, nurses, pharmacists will really benefit from the subcutaneous formulation and it cannot arrive soon enough.